The real problem is that you probably don't know what a key is, and it's a lot more than you might think. If you look at the C major scale, that's just the scale. The key of C major is so much more. I'm pretty sure it will blow your mind what you can do with a chord in the key of C major. I'll show you along the way. If I have to sum up what is the most important point in this video, then it is the scale is not the same as the key. The most important part of the chords associated with a key are the diatonic chords of that scale. So the chords that you'll get if you stack thirds in the scale. So for C major, you have the scale, and then you, of course, can add a third on top of each note. Now, if you add another third, then you're going to get the triads. And you can add another third to get the seventh chords. And on the guitar, the diatonic seventh chords of C major could sound like this. Let's look at a chord progression that we can use to understand some of the chords that are in the key of C, but not in the scale. The first thing that you want to get rid of is the rule that if you have to change the scale, then you're also in another key. That's not how it works. That's not how our ear experiences this. You can go back to the chord progression and listen if you can hear that C is the root. And then also if you get the sense that there's a new root once you hit that A7. So the key is bigger and more sticky than just the diatonic chords and it doesn't modulate until it really establishes a different key. Take a famous song like All the Things You Are. The first part is sort of pretending to be an F minor and then turns out to be an A flat major. But then you get a clear shift once it goes to G7 and resolves to C major 7. First, just listen and notice that at this point it wouldn't sound crazy if the song stayed there and maybe started to play a turnaround in C to stay in that key. So what is the difference between the G7 in All The Things You Are and the A7 in my example? I think the biggest difference is what you hear. You can hear that A flat is not the root anymore when it goes to C major 7 and stays there for a bit. But that also has to do with the fact that the C major 7 is on beat 1 in the third bar of a four bar phrase. So it's given a place in the form that's reserved for the important powerful chords compared to the A7 that's sort of tucked away in the second half of a bar. Another difference is that the C major 7 is a tonic chord, where A7 is a dominant that might lead to another tonic chord, but instead it just resolves back into the key when it goes to the 2 chord, D minor 7. You can start by asking yourself these three things if you want to figure out if something is a modulation. And the first thing is indeed to just use your ears and ask yourself if it sounds like one. Do I hear another root? You can also ask if it's a tonic chord, because if it is modulating, then there has to be a root somewhere, another one. And you also want to check if it's immediately moving back into the original key. That will also help you recognize if it's just some sort of passing chord. Now you know why A7, A flat major 7, E half diminished, and F sharp diminished are not modulations. But what are they then? Let's start with the most common category, secondary dominance. This is about what is probably one of the most important things about chord progression. If you listen to a piece of music, then the chords should help you feel a story. They should create tension and resolution to keep it interesting. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to use secondary dominance. The strongest resolution that we have in music is dominant to tonic. But in the scale, there's only one real dominant. And for C major, that's a G7, the chord on the fifth degree of the scale. Now, luckily, the 5-1 or dominant resolution is so strong that we can also just add dominant chords for other chords as well. In the progression, the chords go from C major 7 to D minor 7. But to add some energy and push towards that D minor 7, then you can add an A7. And in this case, the A7 shows up as belonging to the key of D minor because it resolves to D minor 7. When you analyze these, then you write a Roman numeral 5, 
but put it in a bracket to show that it's not the five of the key, but a secondary dominant. But there is another variation possible as well, which is a bit later in the progression. This is a variation of the secondary dominant, but instead of using the dominant, I'm using the seventh degree of the scale to resolve. So in C major, that would be the same as using B half diminished, resolving to C major seven. And if the chord it resolves to is a minor chord, then you would use a fully diminished chord. So something like C sharp diminished, resolving to D minor seven. These work exactly like the secondary dominants and are maybe a little bit less common, but still in a lot of songs that you'll come across. You analyze them as secondary seventh chords, so a Roman numeral seven with brackets. Let's move on to the chords that are probably the most beautiful and then get to the category that people always try to argue doesn't exist. The grass is always greener on the other side, so when you're moving around in the major key, it can sound really beautiful to have some chords that sound like they're actually in the minor key. In the example progression, I'm using my favorite chord in the key of C major, A flat major seven. Here it's used to create a more interesting transition from the D minor seven back to C major seven. So it feels a little bit like a major subdominant going to a minor subdominant, which would be F minor and then back to the tonic chord. And of course, I'm playing it like this. And you can actually use most of the other beautiful options, like a four minor chord. Or the backdoor dominant, which is really just an F minor six with a funny bass note. Or the Neapolitan subdominant, which sounds great, but is a bit more complicated to explain. I have another video explaining how these work and where they come from in more detail. You can check that out. There's a link in the description of this video. Let's talk about the one that people are always trying to argue doesn't exist. The sharp four diminished chord. So many people want to tell you that it is really another chord that should actually resolve somewhere else, which already tells you that's not a fantastic description. I think the easiest way to understand it is probably to look at it as a chord coming out of voice leading. So if it resolves to C major seven, then you could think of it like this. So really just a way to add a few chromatic leading notes, in this case, these two, the F sharp and the E flat, to go from F back to C. And looking at it like this also makes it clear that you're not modulating to another key. It's not related to another scale in any way. The comment that I get all the time when I'm talking about the sharp four diminished chord is this. No, sorry, not that one. It's this one. Now, why is this a common mistake? Now, it isn't a huge surprise because the first thing you learn with diminished chords is probably about dominant diminished chords. Something like... This is where you get used to just blindly turning a diminished chord into a dominant, and usually that conversion is where the root of the diminished chord, so in this case C sharp, is the third of the dominant. So for C sharp diminished, then of course the dominant with C sharp as a third is A7, which makes sense since A7 is the dominant of D minor seven, which of course is also where the diminished chord is going. So, sounds very similar to but try to compare the sound of this to the part of my example progression that has the F sharp diminished chord. In this example, you have an F sharp diminished, which would then translate into a D7 flat nine, but that doesn't automatically make it a five or five. Looking at it like that would be just looking at the notes and ignoring the other chords. In the progression, the F sharp diminished doesn't resolve to G or G7, it resolves to a C major seven chord. And notice how it actually still sounds like a resolution. If you're in a major key, and we are of course in C major, then the five or five doesn't actually have a flat nine. Try playing some songs that you already know with a five or five and listen to how a flat nine would sound in there because it's not a common sound. I can actually only think of one song that I know that has that sound built into it. And that is to get a blues sound in a very sort of specific place in a song. But I'm sure people will still just comment that it's a five of five also on this video. And this has to do with how you think about chords. Chords are more than notes because the same chord can be many things depending on 
what context it's in. That's also a part of what makes functional harmony such an incredibly powerful tool. You can use that to not only understand the chord progression or make it simpler, but it's also a great help in improvising over chords and knowing what notes to play. To get into that approach and also how Barry Harris and Pat Martino approach harmony, then check out this video which covers that and will make it easier to learn songs and to solo over changes.